What's up guys, today we're gonna to do my two favorite setups to the snap down, which is one of my favorite, favorite takedowns. Now, when you're in posture for wrestling, okay, one of the biggest things you wanna avoid doing is not letting your head go past your lead knee, okay? So here I'm stable, right? I'm in a stable stance here. It doesn't matter how low I am, right, or how high I am, I'm in a stable stance. If Mark tries to call a time me and pull my head down, right, it's gonna be difficult for him. But as soon as I lean my head just a little bit, yeah, Exactly. As soon as I lean my head just a little, let go. As soon as I lean my head just a little bit beyond my lead knee, he's gonna snap me down, right? Easy, easy snap down. So, don't make that dumb mistake. If your opponent makes that dumb mistake, right, you can snap to the same side. Some people prefer snapping to the same side and bringing that shoulder over the top. So, you know, if he's got, a, we'll just use him as an example. If he's got a stupid stance, you can collar tie and pull down to the same side and just in transition move that shoulder over the top or you can go cross side here, right? You can go cross side, right? Move the opposite shoulder over the top. I've done, I've done snap downs with both. Uh, the, one we're, the, we're, the ones we're gonna do today are one of each, right? So the first one, I'm gonna get a collar tie and an underhook. We're gonna assume he's in a good stance, right? We're gonna assume he knows what he's doing, he's in a good stance. So I've got a collar tie and an underhook here, okay? So I'm gonna punch for the underhook. If he's tucking this elbow in, one thing I like to do here to, you know, get that underhook if he's being annoying is I push in on the elbow, Right, and I start searing him this way, right? Making him think I'm going for a throw, right? So if we're here, so I start searing him, right? And what's he gonna do with his elbow? A lot of times he'll push, he'll put pressure back into me when I start searing him this way, and then that's when I punch my underhook, right? Once I start feeling him put pressure back in, I punch that underhook. So I'm here, I'm searing him, right? And then I punch that underhook when I feel that pressure come back in. Now I'm gonna grab his shoulder. From here, I'm going to circle out to my, to my underhook side. So one, right, I step out to the side, I take a semicircle step back and then I pull. One, two, pull. Okay? And my pull is a steer. And I'm steering him over like this so that I can go over the top of the head. All right? So let's do that again. So we're here. Collar tie. He's tight. So I push in, right? He pushes back. I get my underhook just like that. And I almost missed that time. That's okay. I'll try again. Right? Just like that. Uh, I grab the underhook. Circle out, back, pull down, and then bring that arm over the top of the head. One, two, pull, bring that arm over the top of the head. From here, I'm just gonna do a basic snap down. I can keep this underhook or I can go over the top of the arm, doesn't matter, right? I just kick my legs back, pull them down, and then I finish here in the front headlock. When you finish, guys, don't be out like this, okay? He's got no pressure on him right now. Chest high, high on his back, right? Driving into him, right? I bet this feels a lot worse, right? Thankfully in jujitsu, I have the threat of the choke which makes him a little bit more cautious about using sudden explosive movements where he stops defending his neck, okay? So I can use that threat to get a good stable front headlock position while I start looking for my chokes or the back tick. Now, the other setup I'm gonna show is the overhook. So this time he gets the underhook, okay? I don't prefer this position. I prefer to be the one with the underhook. There are some people that disagree. They like the overhook better. Um, you know, Most people don't tend to prefer the underhook, but there are a few people that are they feel they're stronger with the overhook. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna step out. So if we're here, right, and he's got head position, I need to at least try to win it back a little bit. So I'm gonna get this arm to the inside, right, frame, get my head position back. Now I'm gonna to step to the outside, and I'm gonna drive the shoulder straight down to the mat. So I'm gonna keep this tight, drive the shoulder down to the mat, right, arching down, getting him to step forward and break his posture, and now I just come around the head just like that. Again, front headlock, sprawl, finish here. Okay, let's do that one more time. All right, I'll switch sides now. Right. So we're here. He's either grabbing this opposite shoulder or he's grabbing across my waist. Right, show him the tight waist. Yep, this works too, right? He's got throws from here. He's got, he's got the body lock if he connects his hands. Yep, he's got the tiny toes. He's got a lot of stuff he can do. So we're here. Now, I try to win head position back. That helps me. Sometimes I don't need to though. Sometimes, you know, he's, his hips are pretty far away from me. I can probably step out and do this, right? And I immediately come around and sprawl and bring him down, okay? Front headlock is a very, very powerful position in jiu-jitsu. It's good in wrestling too, but in jiu-jitsu, because I have all the submission threats, I have so many submission threats when I'm on top of him, right? Arm out guillotine, arm in guillotine, darts, anaconda, super guillotine, right? All that stuff. So I can use those threats well, to finish the submission if I get lucky, but also to threaten the back take and make him think about the back take, right? I've also got, I mean, 
I've also got crucifix entries. You know, I've got back takes that I can do from there. So it's just such a dangerous position. And uh, if you have a takedown system that gets you there, which is very low risk, which I believe these setups are, they can be very valuable. So there you go, guys. I hope you guys found this useful. I hope you guys can try this out with your training partner. You know, just go three times each, practice your different setups, you know, hard resistance with a hand fighting. And then once it's time to drill, then uh, once it's time for your partner to shoot their takedown, then you lower the resistance, right? And you let them finish and you focus on falling. That's the best way to train this kind of stuff to get into your muscle memory. And then once you're good at that, once you're confident at falling, once you know how to defend yourself and not get hurt and not hurt somebody else, then you go to live rolling. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll catch you next time.